I am back at Uncle E's where you have to have over 50% Hawaiian blood to live back here. I'm gonna take out my Evolve CT9 and go poke us some fish. I haven't had any Nui in a while, so I'm gonna harvest a couple of those and then Uncle E is gonna make something special out of them. The water is definitely picking up pretty bad and there's some absolute tsunamis rolling in. So I gotta get my suit on and get in the water quick. She Oh man, the rocks are so slippery. Woo! <laughs> this is probably the roughest I've ever dove here. And this is one spot you gotta be pretty careful when you come in. Getting out is pretty quick, but when you're coming in, there's some bombs over there. Might have to body surf a little bit, so we'll see what happens. You definitely don't want to get caught on that or you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my fins on the top and as soon as it's calm, I'm just going to blast out of here and get straight to safety. On the way out, my glove strap ripped off, but I made them to safety. How's this dinosaur right here? These guys can live anywhere from 60 to 80 years. That's a long time to be cruising around down here. Guarantee he's seen some crazy stuff. I spot two Kalas off into the distance. They're going for the long shot. I stoned him, but he slipped off. So I had to poke him again. This is Uncle E's favorite fish right there. I like to cut the barbs off before I throw them on my kui. I wanted to grind some kole and had some nice size ones down here. I know a lot of guys don't bother braining these, but personally I would want someone to brain me if I got smashed with the three prong. Another Honu cruising. The waves were so big that I couldn't hold on to the bottom. I'm just letting them push me around and go in with the flow. You can't really tell, but that was a massive wave that passed over me. That's why I was all hyped up. Ox wanted some uhu, so I'm hoping she'll come a little closer for a shot. Oh, you can hear this big wave ripping over me right there. And the surge just pushes me right towards this fatty blue uhu. Seems like every drop I take get one Honu. Get one Uhu in the back there, but she dips out. Get one Uhu coming in on the side here, but he dips out. So now I gotta go for the naughty Kole. Woo! <laughs> 
These honus officially love me. They always come in the say what up on my way down. My main target species is on the other side of this rock. The Nenue. Boom, I spot another one. I still got some air left in my tank, so I swoop in for another cole. Cannot escape the Honu bra, he's always watching. I don't really smash the blues, but Unks wanted one, so I'm giving him a shot. He's not into it and he dips out. <laughs> she notices me lurking and she's all freaked out. And then this guy thinks he's being super sneaky under here. If you want one of these amazing three prongs or any evolved product that I use, Check out EvolveDiving.com and use my promo code HAMA for 10% off your entire order. HAMA deals cuz just for you. I need one more cole and then I'm good to go. I started to scale them but the current was sweeping me far away from my exit so I gotta finish the rest on land. I got my prized possession right here. I'm stoked to give this one to Uncle E. Now I just gotta wait for it to calm down and then I can blast right through there. The water is extremely shallow right here. Every time I swim, my hand is scraping the reef. And I only can take about a 6 inch duck dive or I'm going to smash my face on the rocks. That was a little gnarly coming in, but I made it. Got some good fish. Gonna go get Uncle E and cook up some killer grinds, but I saw the biggest kumu just right there in the shallows. I tried getting him, but he swam underneath the crack and he was gonzos. I only poked enough fish for just for us for today. It's just only three of us eating today, so we never need that much. Lala. Lala, Lala. Woo. All fresh and clean. We got Uncle Yi right there. Well, check out the grinds. Man, it's so rough today. I wouldn't go anywhere today. You went anywhere. <laughs> it's animal. But this kind of size, bro, we should eat them raw. Um, shucks, I think we should make poisson cru. Yeah, sounds action. Tahitian style. Get some uh, kuli kuli. Yeah, we need some more coolie coolie. We, we could do some poke, some poisson cru. Yeah. What are the shirts there?
I don't know if you can see, if you look right there, you know, fat little opal on the bottom. Some of holy holy right there. Tiny stuff, like, th this is like when estuary is like, where they go for breed and stuff and all maybe. How do they get in here? Nowadays they call them king tide, but I don't know. It's just tide. It's just high, super ass high tide. It's on super high tide nowadays. Yeah. And before it used to happen once or twice a year, now it happens like four times a month. Oh, wow. And that's just for real. That's yeah. true. And I, my house is right there. So it's not like I don't notice. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I can watch the whole thing happen as it as it goes. And yeah, definitely the ocean is deeper and the tides are gnarlier. And um, everything has changed. But Kanaka thinking now, it's just like we're sailing. Like if the wind changed, sure, you adjust the sail. Either way, you're going forward. So we got them. We got them. This is a beautiful spot right there. What? Well, is this still your property? No. That's my neighbor. That's wow. um, this Kamo's place over here. I hope Kamo no mine. <laughs> you get some nice little coolie over here. They're growing real, real nice around this area where the water comes in. So it's kind of pristine. The fresh water comes out from this direction where the pond is and kind of rushes through and joins with the ocean over here, creating like a natural estuary. It's a good spot. Uh, right now, the fish are not really breeding, so there's not a whole lot of keiki, but when it does go off, there's, it's loaded. There's a ton of them. But for right now, it's an oceanside plant that, for me, it provides a real nice I appreciate the salty component inside of some of my pokes, uh, especially when you forget the salt or whatever. But I don't know. I've been doing so many times. I kind of sometimes prefer it um, over salt, just straight salt. It's got that nice little crunch too. And it, it's got a nice little crunch and it gives a little stuff like a texture. And then it's got a cute little flower. So if you make your wife mad, then if you put this like, on top of her poke when you serve her then she'll probably forgive you so that's probably good but look how pretty pretty yeah so you want to go right behind that big rock and then just try to check them out drop us this is one of uncle Yi's tronet spots right there That's a lot of power coming through that channel. Awesome. So, should I try and get this coconut or what? No way, they're gonna be wasting my time because I know can. Uh, well, I guess we're gonna have to skip the coconut. Cool. Oh, that's okay. You know what I'm gonna let him just do bad, you know what I mean? Come on, big black. Like my wife big is black. so worried about the ants too, the ant bite the eye. Oh Luke. Come on, big black. Come on. You can grab a couple from over there? Yup. Yeah. Unks wants a couple of tea leaves. Take my little scrub with you when you go. Let me clean up the tea leaf a little bit. If you need a machete, stay on the hollow tree. This one, the thing with Maki, so don't worry.
even though skewers only cost a dollar. We're gonna make some skewers real quick. This one is perfect because like if you can see up at the top, the thing stay dry out, but then like down below, it still holds on to the tree real tight. So that means the thing is strong. Like, I'm gonna, cut. I'm gonna try to grab one section about maybe like that. And then I'm gonna hoist them, put them inside here. So I can make like, this is Sparta! <laughs> Anyhow, you grab this and then we're gonna make the skewers out of this. So we get our stem, sit down a little bit. Boom, we clean up like that. And then this can end up be skewers for the fish, yeah? So then what you do is like you just grab one spot. And pretty simply you just Go through. Try to make them the same fat. And this is funny, I'm making the whole thing like we get freaking on Marlin, but we get two tune in ways. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm doing, but. Ugh. Ah, that's good, huh? Those are some nice ones. You can make one grill out of this. Like if you should just throw these on top and then put these, look at that, Kanaka stuff right there. No more metal. Stuck out in uh, the kind. Boss this one. Bruh. You're making cow beef. <laughs> Roger. Look, that's a grill. Wow. The thing burn, yeah. But no burn before the, the, the meat gonna cook. Just make them nice and good and sharp. And look, the planning length, the length has to do with how far your hand will be from the file. So you just run this through your meat. We're gonna throw some skewers in the barbie, so. We need a good fire and nice embers. Probably about, I'll say about, maybe less than an hour. This thing be ready. Soggy nei nui. No, just soggy wood. Soggy wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's that one? Coming along, but. I'm here because I, I like it. You know what I mean? Well, first things first, uh, when shot Noni, that brother Jason never know about. When shot? Take when shot Noni, bomb. Woof. Homemade. It's the finest year you can find. Mm. Yeah. It's homemade money from our plant right by our house. It's from our our tree from by my house. This is um star fruit pickles. There you go. I'm not sure what part is what. Hmm, like kind of sour. Kind of dulls the star fruit, but then the star fruit taste flavor kicks in towards the end yeah 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 right I at like the that, end yeah. you get that like unique sweetness of what the star fruit is mm -hmm. but it's, it just tastes like a pickle at first kind of reminds me of pickled mango but we get some pure garlic we're just gonna flavor the oil a little bit that's some chum in before we gonna salt the fish and then once we put on this Badass kawaii pakai. Then we're gonna throw them in the fryer. We're frying them so 
It's kind of hard to overdo it. The thing will come off, that's why. I'm going to oil. Lummy, lummy. Some lummy, lummy. Ooh, you pretty. Uh oh. I'm going to do the auto side like that with the reverse action. Oh, oh man, I don't even. Can we even fit both of them? These are huge. Look at like that. Make some french fries on the side. Bro, we already got the oil hot. We might as well use them, huh? Oh, how's this? Potato is just acting stupid with them brews on them. Get. Get some fish and chips. Put some, some tater wallies in there. You know what I mean? Since the oil hot, might as well take advantage. You know, fat taro cut in half and cooked to perfection. Um, sometimes they make poi, but today it sucks. There's so much things going on. No, no more time for pound and cooey and clean up. So we're just going to eat them like that. So boom, we grab that. Boom, we grab that. we just eating, okay? So I'm not trying to act like... like Gordon Ramsay over here. Yeah, I'm not being all Ramsay <laughs> out on this one. I just like... Brad's grinds, the thing is kill a brand new bottle of Blue Man Ponchi. Where you get that from? Brad Nalu. Down in um Pana Evo. Him and his wife, when they smoke meat, they also smoke soyu. This is smoked soyu, bro. Smoked soyu. I'm just gonna drip them on your drippables. Just a little bit. There you go. Tell me if you don't taste that smoky and that soil oh. too, bro. That bug is guaranteed to get it. Oh, the french fries. Ooh, look at that. Right when I was about to get out, you know the exit right over there, yeah? Like one of the biggest kumus I've ever seen right there under the crack. You know why? Right there to the left of where you go out. What is that? Uh-oh. Big old coles. Uh-oh, whip together one quick sauce. I think what we can do is take some of that blue man ponchi. Brother Nalu, you gotta make the puka bigger. <laughs> Our action is too thick for this bugger. Maybe we put a little bit spicy. I don't know if you guys can see that, but our chili pepper water. No more even water. <laughs> How long has that been fermenting? This is from the days of the monarchy, bro. Oof. This came out of the Iolani Palace uh, basement. Yep. Okay. Tongs. <laughs> Gotta go this way, I think. Oh, Gotta get some of that that's action. pickle me action. And then maybe I put one fruit from the star fruit, though. Put one of those in there. See this pepper? This one came from Jaja right there. This one is the round pepper, bro. Eh, no, eat that by accident. I'm gonna bust them up a little bit, add some spice. That bugger, they told me it wasn't spicy. Believe me, it's spicy. That was hot, huh? It's spicy. They said, this one not spicy, it just tastes good. Now I ever listen to somebody tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> one shot of sesame. That's your dipping sauce for your kolele. See him sparkling. See the sauce sparkling. Woo. Oh, oh, french fries. Oh, bro. This ain't french fries. This is kole fries. Ow, it's hot. But we get the heat. We good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's perfect size for us tonight. It's a nice one. Pretty. Nice what do you colors. think about that? Would you steal this from Uncle Jason? If he put it on top of the rocks and he's cleaning fish, 
Would you run off with this? We'll just put this color on old rusty camping grill. That's a beautiful fish. It's actually my favorite fish right now to eat. Yeah. My number one favorite fish. Kole fries right there with some kole on top. Ooh, I taste the chili pepper. Garlic fries right there. Oh, that one is so good. Mm. All orange already, the oil. Look at the color. That's how you make cole fries with wow. cole oil. Look at that. Oh, that bugger nice. I'm from Wainaya. That was the smell at Miley Beach Park because the uncles would just cast and then they would catch collars and then they would just make them on a beach just like this. And they'd make them like, oh, look at that. And then make just butter garlic and just dip them in. I'd rather eat that than lobster. But that bugger on them. So boom, we're gonna make one skewer with this from the... Is that the Roy? The Roy. But this the coconut skewer that we make earlier. So now I can use this one for painting that one. If you're not hacking. You whacking. <laughs> <laughs> so I can poke them and hang them like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so that I kind of. Smoke them too, huh? Yeah, he can get smoked too. What, you taking tokes, boy? Ooh, he's wising up, he's wising up. Almost ready. Look how Murph this vaga. Look on. Oh where? Yeah, put him by the rest of his brothers. Yeah, yeah, you guys go. The whole family. You gotta give me all the time in the world, you know. Fuck I lose one of the head things. Cuba mad it. There we go. What is this dish? Uh Poisson crew is uh Tahitian dish in a poke possum crew style and actually this is my one of my favorite ways to eat that fish so we got some lemons Woo. so we're gonna cook the flesh with the the lemon in there it's kind of crazy how fast that cooks the fish yeah it does. We just go put these inside the avocado. So we're just eating what we get, yeah? Yeah. So boss them up, let the sauce get in, let them cook. You see how the thing turning more white already? Mm -hmm. Fast the thing though. Yeah, you. It's not my first rodeo there, cowboy. We're gonna just put that on the side, ready for go. I don't really like it too much of the sauce, but I like a few peppers in there. So it's going to be a little, see how I, I chose the green one. I never like really grabbed the too much red one, but I'm going to leave them whole mm -hmm. so that you can choose whether you want that spiciness in your life or not. Somehow when I do that, it's so funny. My wife always end up eating the whole pepper by accident. <laughs> and she know <laughs> in a pot stew I put one chili pepper she don't want fire. <laughs> how many times it's so funny how many times okay boom see how that's the more creamy part like this is can kind of shit yeah? so like the, the creamy part is on the top and the watery part is on the bottom so I never shake the can I only wanted the creamy part Yeah, you. Clean them off, huh? Can't be letting stuff pop out on the side, huh? Oh, ooh, Bernan. Bugger ready, too. Here we go. Yeah, Damn yeah. man. Okay, let's put them on the table and then we can get to some grinds. From the Akuli Kuli we get earlier. Like, I can keep these two because they're going to flower on top. Mixed in. Baby, this for you. The flower. Oh, it's pretty. 
Well, there we go. But what? You want me to try one bite first? Yeah. Spoonie on. Make sure you get some out of each of the ingredients, butter. Some fish, some avocado, some of that. Oots, oots. And then you just chase them with some. You just chase them with some little bit collar. I'm not gonna push my hand <laughs> forward. <laughs> I'm very steady. <laughs> I think we're gonna end up cole fry this half. But I do like them not fried sometimes. Taro fries. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw those in. Huge chunks of taro that are fried. And it's got the co the cole flavor. All right, so we just finished cooking this delicious spread, and what we got over here, Unks? Oh, bro, you ain't hearing them good. Looks like we get one grill-fired collar. We get some Roy skewers with hammer glaze. We scored some collar from Brother Chris over at Tree Works in Hilo. Mahalo, Brother Chris. We got some dipping sauce that just got kind of murdered up a little bit earlier. Just these beautiful collars, nice and fat. And then we got our Poisson crew. My wife made some Japanese rice, mostly because she's Japanese. Oh, I almost forgot. My chili pepper water. Huh? Give it chili pepper water, so we <laughs> put a little bit of that. Woo! Some heat. Just a splash. And you can add your own if you like more. And then get Lily Koi's over there. Shall we pull it real quick? Mahalo Aina. Mahalo to our friends. Mahalo to our family. Mahalo to the gods. Raja, we'll grind, bro. Yee! Tell us what it tastes like. Thank you. Rubbish, trauma eh? No good. Mmm. It's really good. No lie. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Can you taste the fish? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not fishy tasting though, yeah? No, not at all. Yeah. It's super smooth. I nice like and the fatty. green one. It's the akuli kuli. Mm-hmm. Be good. Roy coconut shish kebabs. This is the coconut frond that we didn't cut for make the skewers because we never go store and we hit coconut trees. Mmm. Got uh, the <laughs> spice is really good on it. Yeah. That's that's the spicy from your spice sauce, bro. Mmm. Good. So everybody talking sh about Roy, why? Usually I would make butter garlic for something like that. When I go grab the fried taro. The cola is super good, huh, Auntie? Yeah. It's really good. That's Actually, like, good with the lady koi too. Yeah. Man, it tastes so, so fresh right there. <laughs> you just caught it. Of course it's fresh. No, but you can taste it like... <laughs> yep. Oh, I didn't cook that, did I? No? Honey? No need. So our fried taro is looking... Mochos cherries. Woo. Let's do the peel back of the kalala. The lobster. And get our cobbles out. No way. No way. We're going to do a little bit of a crackle bird. No more butter garlic. Get cole oil. Get the cole oil on top. We in business, baby. We in business. Let's get to eating. <laughs> Jam, yep. Unk, sample the collar. Oh, the collar. Yeah. Oh, we get the sample the collar first. Okay. Oh, look at this clean, white, beautiful slice. Get a little of that. Mm mm. And some collar. Big collar. I don't even know anything better than things like that. Right. That's Uncle's favorite right there. It's my number one fish. Here you go, Bob. Wait on my cooties. Go ahead. Nah, I got it. 
Not that many. Just a few. Nice texture, huh? Not bad at all. Uh, no. Crispy cole taro chips. I mean, I don't know how more cheaply you can get than that. It's cole oil and it's kalo and it's crispy because we ball out because we get propane on the beach. It's way better than the pota the French Chris fries. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, than the French so fries. Oh, sure. much better. Brother Chris, the guy who gave us the um the lemons. Mm -hmm. For they turn off all the lights. Oh, Uncle Yee's got a bunch of purebred dobies right there. He can show me. So cute. Hey, aloha. Hey, I wanted to welcome you guys into my house. This is our holly, uh, where we raise up our dogs. We get Dobermans, kill a bloodline. Who we got right here? Oh, this one, shucks, we don't name them. Well, the litter was seven. One already went to Oahu and lives in Waikiki and is doing terrific. That one's name is Ruger. So this red collar one is gonna head off to California. But the whole thing is they're just incredibly intelligent. The cutest puppies in the whole world right there. She's a black and tan, pure doby. You can see the skull cap. Like all that gonna fill in with muscle. This one gonna be on hammer. Yeah, this is this isn't the pick of the litter to me. This little cuties for sale. Get in touch with me. Links on the stuff below. If you guys is interested in like these wonderful family dogs that also act as protection dogs. This is Kalo. Oh, Kalo. And Yes. Sir.